Hey guys, what's up? It's Claire, and this week we're doing something a little bit different. Um, we're gonna attempt to hike the trail from Harderklum to Oxmathorn in Switzerland. Um, it's a 17 kilometer hike, nine hours round trip, around a thousand meter elevation gain. And um, we're gonna try to set out around like 4 a.m. so we can like catch the sunrise on the way. So some people have flashlights, some people brought like walking sticks and stuff to make sure we get on the trail okay. And we're gonna be staying in Interlochen for the night. And um, once we get to the end of Oxmouthen, we're probably gonna catch a bus back to Interlochen and then catch a train to Geneva um, later today. So we'll see, we bought a bunch of snacks. We got like ham, cheese, bread, jam, a bunch of granola bars, three liters of water each. It's kind of heavy, not gonna lie, but um, we'll see how it goes. And then hopefully the view will be nice. It should be pretty like, like um, the grass should be pretty green. It's not peak season yet, but um, it's getting there, it's getting there. And thankfully it's not too cold. So we'll see how it goes. Good morning, it's currently 4 a.m. And we're at Interlochen West, and we're heading to the trailhead up to Hodrickson. So just kidding um so basically update we probably can't get over to oxmathon because there's a lot of snow on like the slopes for example here the snow's already kind of melting it's because it's like crumbling really fast and we're on a steep ravine so the path to oxmathon there's like a split where you can start heading back down to interlochen west i believe but like that path is like 
facing the north side of the mountain, which means that it's in less sunlight. So it's probably gonna be even more, um, more treacherous. And by the rate we're going, it's like 1.30 p.m. So um, it's gonna be very tight. We probably can't catch the bus back either. Just because there's so much snow, it's taking us double the time that we need. But we've reached like halfway point to Oxmothorn. We saw like three people, like three solo hikers, and they all were like, oh no, we had to turn back just because it, it wasn't safe to go through. And then we have like Sarov and, um, and Marvin like scouting out the, the terrain over there. And it is pretty like, it's like covered in snow and there's like a steep drop on both sides. And like the path that's walkable is like wet and muddy. And it's only like, maybe like a foot length. So we were like, oh, it's probably not a good idea for everyone to go through. So we probably have to turn back and yeah, just backtrack. Kind of sad, but it's probably for the best since conditions are pretty bad. <laughs> I did not. I did not expect that. I didn't believe you. So we found the other way down. It's like one hour, 45 minutes. Elevation change of a thousand meters. Um, so it's pretty steep. But there's not that much snow here, thankfully. But we're gonna take two hours to get down. It's all good. <laughs> Low key walking down here doesn't seem that bad. But you can I think we made it halfway down at this point. But my legs are starting to get really shaky. We just had like a little snack break, last of the food. But it's nice up there. Um, we took another way down, but it does Oh, it's rough. Shoes are disgusting. So let me just pause here to explain what really happened. So we were supposed to take the trail called Ringenberg all the way down to Ringenberg, the town, to take the train back. Um, but halfway down this two hour, 45 uh, minute trail, it was completely blocked off by trees. And like, I think there was like a bad storm recently. So we there was no way we could get through um, anymore. And next to the trail, there happened to be a slope where we could like see all the way down to the town so somebody had a genius idea and it was like oh how about we just like slide down the slope it shouldn't take that long right but we i guess we're kind of desperate to head back because it was starting to get dark so we just ended up sliding down the mountain which is what you're seeing right now so basically the other trail option is completely closed off this is our only option Hi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have a good time. <laughs> we just Yo, we found a trail. Miraculously, the same trail we were supposed to go on, but we're almost there. And I think we got like a an hour of daylight left, so we're so close. Kind of funny. We might be able to. You, you wanted to see the sunset, Sam. You got it. Bro. That was <laughs> looking one of the stupidest but smartest things I've ever done in my life. But um. But we no, somehow made. Really <laughs> we were like this close to calling the the helicopter to come pick us up. Paul Voss is gonna have a heart attack, but yeah, it's Paul okay. Never we got this beautiful view right here, and we're heading down. So, hey. Update: My legs are shaking. My hands are low-key kind of swollen, which is concerning. But 
I'm gonna get down on flat land first before anything really. The sun is going down. But we're, we're managing. The sun's going down. I'm kind of worried because we heard some weird noises up there. Um, could be some like links or. Yo. Did you make it? Oh, we made it. No, I think there's an opening down there. But um, no, we heard some weird noises. Um, they could be just like ibises, but. But um. We'll see. We're almost here. We're almost there. Oh my god, there's hope. We see cement. There's paved road at least. No, seriously, for like a hot it's second. Hot it was like, gen when we were flying down the slope, I was like genuinely worried that we might die. Because like, I don't know if you can see in the video, but it looks like it's close. But there's like a ledge. And then there's like more like rocks and like other like s like softer slopes that we go on, but I couldn't see over the ledge obviously. And then when we passed by back there, we actually saw that like little ledge area, and it was like a sheer cliff. Um, so it was really lucky that we found the opening right where we got off. I don't know what I would have done at that point. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. Okay, so we ended up in this random ass road in the middle of nowhere, but Ringenberg train station is right there. Like right there. <laughs> but um, we'll see how. Because <sighs> there is a shortcut down here. Wait, 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 wait. Supposedly. Dude, these jets are walking it up. Because I was trying to go on a cruise during this week. Say me too. It was too early. Okay, they dropped us in, like, off 30 minutes. kind of close to the train so station, the next, so we're like, going to try to, like, catch the train to interlock and to get our stuff first. But God, it's good. Oh, God, it's good. Like, what? Like, how do you just meet some random people with this huge man who will take you down, like, 200 meters from the mountain and then drop you off where you need to go? Like, and the sun hasn't even set yet. Like, God, crazy. Uh, oh, we, we did made it. it. We did it. <laughs> Oh, there's a bus right there. I'm gonna take a video real quick. So basically, if it can get any worse, there was a fucking fire underneath our hotel. Um, it looks like there's some like construction tunnel or something that like caught on fire and all the smoke was like coming into like our rooms and stuff. We were on the third floor, but um, there's no like smoke detectors, nothing. So like, luckily we had one girl who was like awake, but like, actually woke us up. But, like we were staying in separate rooms. Today. Did you take any videos? I don't know how we see it. 
So we were staying at a small hotel in Geneva, a small French town on the Swiss border, and we had literally just gotten to the hotel maybe like two or three hours. Everyone except for one person had already fallen asleep. The guys were in a separate room. And basically, it wasn't because there was a construction site underneath that caught on fire. Somebody purposely set the trash room in the basement on fire and had set two other fires within the vicinity but closer to the fire station so they could distract the firefighters from coming to the hotel, um, hoping that they would go to the other ones first and then the people at the hotel would... I don't know, die or something, because there was no smoke detector, no fire alarm. There was literally somebody just outside the window who was yelling at everybody to wake up. And thankfully, one of the people, um, one of the girls in my room heard and she woke us up. Okay, we're actually on the train to Metz right now. It's like 7 a.m. We were able to like get back into the hotel apartment room and then um, like, get our luggage within like two hours of them like cleaning it up and stuff. But there was no water or electricity. Like everything was just pitch black. The alarm was going off. The smoke in the stairwell was pretty bad. It just smelled like chemically fumes. Like, because at first, when we like exited the building, it was like white smoke, but then later on, it like turned black. So I don't know, <clears throat> like what exactly was going on in that construction site underneath it, but it like smelled really, really bad. Like it was like giving me low-key a headache. So like a dude came in with a carbon monoxide monitor and was like, "Okay, y'all, y'all are good. But just like leave the windows open or something." So we just packed up and then got out of there in like five minutes, but. We're on the way back. We didn't even end up like strolling around Geneva just cause like, like it's just been a, a long weekend. Um, but yeah, hopefully the ride back is smooth. <laughs> Looks like it. And then we get to see the sunrise kind of, not really. Yeah. We're all good. Like it's so sad, like we ha we're still wearing the clothes we wore yesterday. I got like tree sap like on my fucking skirt. There's like, there's like dirt everywhere. Um, we have no other clothes, but we just like threw on everything and just left. That was crazy. All right, so. We made it to Strasbourg and like usual, there's something wrong with this station. I think our train departed like 12 minutes early because of some like engineering work on the line. So the Euro came in clutch and then we got like um, another TGV ticket like at the kiosk just now for 10 euros to come back at like 1.30 p.m. into mess. So probably just take that back. Go buy some food, shower, throw everything in the laundry because all of our clothes just smell horrible. They're like burnt, ashy, chemically. And um, gotta wash these shoes too. They're dirty, but we're almost there. 